So last section that will be on your test is chapter 11, section 5, which goes over more invertebrates. Again, your invertebrates are going to be animals without a backbone. We've already covered the groups of mollusks, um, the different arthropods, the different insects, and echinoderms. Um, these other groups are also going to have this protostome development, and we'll talk about worms first, and then we'll talk about um, sponges and cnidarians. So again, we are going from more complicated to simple. We talked about vertebrates, um, now invertebrates, and your more complicated invertebrates. And eventually we are going to go to your more simple invertebrates, which are your spon sponges. So let's talk about worms first. There's three phyla of worms that you guys should know. Um, phylum Annelida, Phylum Nematoda, and Phylum Platyhelminth. Okay, so your annelids are going to be your segmented worms. Your phylum nematoda are going to be your round worms. And your phylum platyhelminths are going to be your flat worms. So let's talk about phylum annelida first. There are about 13,000 species. They are going to have segments. So we are going to see grooves running down their bodies. They will have protostome development and defined tissues, um, but they do not molt. And we'll see the difference between another group of worms here. Um, there are going to be three groups. Your marine polychaetes, poly means many. Your terrestrial oligochaetes, and your leeches. Um, poly, remember, means many, and keats means bristles, so they're going to have many bristles, and when we look at a picture, you'll see what I mean about that. Your oligochaetes are going to be your, um, or examples are going to be your earthworms. Um, we know that earthworms play a crucial role in our environment, um, they help recycle decaying matter, um, which eventually helps with uh, nutrition in the soil, which helps out our plants. Okay, so we have our example of a polychaete on the top left-hand corner, um, your leeches and your um, earthworm, or your oligochaetes at the bottom. All right, phylum nematoda. These are going to be your round worms. There are about 90,000 species of roundworms. They are protostomes, again, their mouth forms first. They are going to have defined tissues, and the reason why I'm mentioning defined tissues is we'll see one phylum that is not going to have tissues. And then they are going to grow by molting. So big difference between your annelids and your nematodes is that one, annelids have segments and your nematodes or your roundworms do not. And then your annelids, your segmented worms, are not going to grow by molting, but your roundworms are. Some of your nematodes are going to be parasites. Um, a large number of these are going to cr uh, cause human diseases. And some examples are your nematodes and your phili filari. So examples, um, again, they have long, narrow, unsegmented bodies, which will differ them from your annelids. They are going to be bilaterally symmetrical, and they have to grow, or um, in order to grow, they must molt. And then your phylum platyhelminths. There are about 20,000 species of these, and they will not molt. These are going to be your flatworms. Some of them are parasitic but some of them are also free living. Um, and some examples are going to be your flukes and your tapeworms. They will have a hail, head and tail region. Um, most of them are going to be hermaphroditic. And some will just have a single opening in their body. Again, um, because they're animals, they must consume things. So food enters, waste leaves through the same opening in some of these platyhelminths. 
The next group is your Cnidarians. Your C is silent. There are about 11,000 species of Cnidarians. They are going to have defined tissues and be radially symmetrical. Now, this term Cnidarian may not be familiar to you, but you will see some examples of Cnidarians that will be familiar. Because these are going to include your jellyfish, your sea anemones, and your corals. Um, Cnidarians are going to have two types of body forms. Some of the Cnidarians are going to spend their life cycles as both. Those two body forms are going to be your polyp and your medusa. Your polyps are going to be sessile, so they are no longer moving. They're stationary. They're stuck in one place. And then your medusa are going to be your free-floating body forms. Uh, we'll look at some examples. Um, remember, your corals are cnidarians. Your corals are going to be sessile. Um, your jellyfish are going to be your free-floating, moving medusas. Cnidarians are carnivores. They will use their tentacles to capture and feed. Um, they have these specialized cells called cnidocytes, which are going to be their stinging cells. So those stinging cells are going to pretty much paralyze their prey, which allows them to help capture and feed. So here are your examples. Again, they are radially symmetrical. I can divide them from any point. Um, and then their tentacles are going to be armed with those cnidocysts, which are used to paralyze their prey. And finally, phylum periphera, the last phylum you guys need to know for your exam. These are going to be your sponges. There are about 5,000 species of sponges. And this is the only phylum that is going to lack tissues and organs. They are also going to be asymmetrical, so there is no symmetry. They are not bilaterally or radially symmetrical. They have no symmetry. Some common characteristics, again, no tissues or organs. Um, they're phylum periphera because their body has these pores. You can obviously see them. You think of your sponges that you actually use. Um, they are going to be sessile as adults, but their larva and their juvenile form are going to be free swimming. So they have these different life cycles. Okay, that is all you guys need to know for your test. Um, study hard, read the book, um, do the study guides, um, and go through these PowerPoints again um, as review. But good luck and have fun with it.